Love comes in many forms, not all of which are familiar. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about romance adventure seeds for Dragonlance. I'd like to take a moment and thank the DL Saga members and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate links. I'm referencing the long line of romance greats from novels to films. If I miss a genre element that you enjoy, please leave a comment below. Dragonlance has always been steeped in romance. It's a core aspect to the series. From the love triangle between Tanthala's half-elven and Laurel Anthalasa Cannon and Kidiar Uthmatar, to Karaman Majir and Tika Whalen. We have cross-species love with Huma and the Silver Dragon and Gilthanus and Dargent. We even saw a touch of friendly love between Bapu and Raceland Majir. But love is not always a mutually received emotion. There is a reason for all the heartbreak songs and poetry in our various cultures, after all. Love is a drug that can lift you up or tear you apart, and romance, the celebration or chasing of that love, can be just as rewarding or destructive. Since we just passed yet another Valentine's Day, let's take a look at a few adventure seeds that begin with love, but perhaps not in the way one might expect. But first, allow me to present a bit of a disclaimer. I am a romantic at heart, and I do not kink shame. Whatever anyone does in the privacy of their own homes is their business, so long as it's between consenting adults. This being a set of fantasy role-playing adventure seeds, I am going to have to request the same level of tolerance from you. For, while your characters may not understand or accept interspecies love, in a fantasy game, it seems to be inevitable that it will come up, so let's embrace it in the spirit in which it's intended. The first adventure seed I'd like to refer to is unrequited love, and while the idea of having romantic feelings for someone who does not return them is an act as old as time, I think we can do it one better. The heroes overhear Constable Hickson muttering disbelief under his breath while he's drinking in the middle of the day at the Steel Tankard Tavern in Haven. This is odd behavior for the constable. Upon inquiry, the heroes either overhear his mutterings or they ask him and receive the tale. Apparently, Minnie Lowen reported her fiancé, Baselin Frethers, missing. Upon investigation of their home, however, signs of a struggle and murder are everywhere. The scene was one of carnage with blood present but no actual body. Minnie refuses to say anything more about it, and, suspecting some form of foul play, the constable placed Minnie in a cell until the investigation can be completed. But the constable's beside himself, knowing Baselin murdered but unable to prove it, and without a body, he'll have to let Minnie go free. He implored the heroes to go to Frether Farm and find the body of Baselin. The heroes will have an opportunity to question Minnie, who reveals Baselin and she were to be wed, but that he has been having an affair and ran off with the harlot. Minnie keeps referring to the other woman as a different piece of furniture with each reference. When the heroes search the home, they notice a shovel hidden under hay in the barn loft. This has traces of swamp mud and leads them directly to the nearby marsh near Haven River. In typical dramatic fashion, the foul weather makes unearthing the remains challenging, and what they find throws them for a loop. They unearth a chest, within which is the mutilated body of Bracelin Frathers. But the chest itself is a mimic. When the heroes open the chest, it wails in grief, and if given a chance to speak, it reveals that Bracelin and Beauty, what Bracelin named the mimic, have been in love for decades. Minnie was a close friend who grew feelings for Bracelin, but he refused to return them. And in a night of passion, Minnie threatened Bracelin and gave an ultimatum. Marry me or die, believing his love for beauty unnatural. But Bracelin couldn't return her love and paid for it with his life. In an act of jealousy and spite, she murdered Bracelin and stored his remains inside beauty, burying them both. If Bracelin wanted beauty, they could be together forever. Now, not every love story ends in murder, but that doesn't always equal a happy ending either. 
We have seen interracial relationships, even interspecies, but what if they're forced to be separated? Not by family animosity, but by necessity. For years in one of your heroes' youth, they saw a beautiful creature off the coast of Goodland who would visit with them daily. This young siren was first curious about the land mammal, but the curiosity grew into friendship and eventually love. But they could never be together, the kender from Goodland and the siren from the Blood Sea. As the kender went on their wanderlust, they ended up forgetting about the youthful love, and when they returned to Goodland, they found only loneliness. One day on the coast, they noticed a song carried on the waves, a song of sorrow, but incredibly familiar. The kender gets in a boat and rows into the ocean, led by the song. They come upon a wounded siren, who they recognize as their youthful love. She has been wounded by a ravaging tribe of Koalanth. The kender helps the siren by bringing her home to tend to her wounds. They are quickly faced with the reality that the siren cannot live on land with the kender, and the kender cannot live in the sea with the siren. While time never extinguished the passion they shared for each other, they were forced to accept that their lives are worlds apart. The kender and siren meet at the coast every day for hours, but when night falls, they're forced to return to their separate homes and lives. This leads them to forsake everything else in their life, and while they're draped in their love for each other in the day, their lives suffer for it, as family and friends witness them wasting away. This can lead to an intervention, or possibly a missing kender or siren, for the heroes to investigate on behalf of the family and friends. The final adventure seed deals with finding love when it's not sought after, and in fact, wholly absent in the start. Two of the heroes' characters grew up together. One tormented the other, bowling them mercilessly for years. Adulthood and adventuring separated them, giving them perspective and a chance meeting in the coastal town of Beacon in northern Ergoth. In the furthest point in the world that they could possibly get from their hometown, they run into each other again. What begins as verbal jabs and a barroom brawl ends in sharing a cell in the local jail. They share their perspectives of their youth. One liked the other but didn't know how to share it, and that behavior grew into bullying. The other hated the bully and became indifferent to the world due to their youthful abuse. The next morning, they're released and decided to have dinner. That dinner turns into breakfast. And after so many years, finding each other so far away, they connect, apologize, forgive, and find love. This lasts through one adventure to another, until they are ultimately captured by Minotaur pirates and sold into slavery. They're placed in a gladiator pit and forced to fight, eventually facing off against one another. The former bully cannot take the pain of killing their one true love, and the other cannot bring themselves to fight their newfound love, regardless of the complexities of their past. The Minotaurs are clear in their ultimatum. Either one of them dies, or they both do. Allow the heroes to make the choice. Does the former bully give their life for love? Does the other give theirs sharing forgiveness and adoration in their last moment? Or do they face off against their oppressors and do their best to stand together until the end? I can't think of any reason, except for love, that would be worth dying for. It doesn't mean you have to. And perhaps they can make it out of the pit and live their lives on the run until they reach civilization. But that is all I have to say about these romance adventure seeds for Dragonlance. What do you think of the stories? Do you have any you would like to share with the community? And finally, do you enjoy adding character romance to your campaigns? Leave a comment below. I would like to take a moment and remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click the like button. This all goes to help other Dragonlance fans learn about this channel and its content. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember, don't start trouble you can't finish.